Hey guys, and welcome back to RBR. And today we have a very special look at what is probably the first non S class of a series model car to be introduced to the very prestigious Maybach brand. And that is the brand new Maybach GLS 600. So guys, my back as a brand, it's really evolved a lot over the years. Originally, it was bought out in the 1960s by Daimler and used as an ultimate luxury brand for their cars. But we will remember more modern day cars like the Maybach 57 and 62, very much S-class looking massive luxury limousines. But in the reshuffle done at Daimler back in around about 2013, their subsidiaries were all renamed. For example, we had Mercedes-Benz as it's always been, but then AMG was renamed to Mercedes AMG and Maybach was renamed to Mercedes Maybach. And perhaps we didn't realize it as much then, but this was a clear signal of where Mercedes intended to take this brand. Now look at AMG, for example. When it was renamed to Mercedes AMG, we had a clear understanding that this was clearly a Mercedes still, but with AMG DNA. So the cars have their own design language completely unique to AMGs. Their own technological achievements with regards to driving performance as a focus. And of course, customer expectations are very important as well. And AMG customers have their own expectations. Now, when we look at the Maybach, perhaps this is what is now happening today. And Mercedes Maybach now has its own DNA, which is very, very clear. We have a focus on ultimate luxury. We have technological advancements that focus on comfort specifically for the passengers. And of course, then we have customer expectations in that regard as well. So if we look at the most modern Mercedes Maybach, we have to go, of course, to the S-Class. But this is perhaps a little bit confusing if we are trying to understand how the brand has evolved over time. Because of course, we had the 57 and the 62 in the past. Then we had cars, for example, like the huge my back G-Class Lordy Lay. Again, more of a one-off. But today's car, the one we're looking at, really gives you a clear indication of where my back is going with the brand. We have taken a base Mercedes GLS, but applied strong my back DNA to it in every single area. So now we have to break down what are those areas. I think anyone who's seen anything to do with my back in recent times will recognize that face. How can you not? This is signature my back now. We've seen it. For example, in this very same place where we shot the Vision 6 Coupe and its very, very handsome sibling, the Vision 6 Cabriolet. But more than that, more than both of those, a car that I hadn't shown you yet and I was saving specifically for today was the Vision Ultimate Luxury, which was of course, as we thought back then, based on a GLS type car. Now you can see how that car and this one really do marry in terms of design. The most important thing is this front grille here. And you will notice a very Maybach specific design, which I'm gonna show you a close up of. And you'll see this translated throughout the car as something very specifically Maybach. Now, we also saw earlier when we were looking around the car that you haven't got the laurel wreath anymore as you would in a Mercedes grille. Instead here, you have Maybach written here in the specific Maybach typography. We've also got the return of the star on the bonnet, of course, never been done on a Mercedes SUV before, but very clearly showing this car as a Maybach. Now, the other thing you'll notice, we have discussed in the past how GLS makes the GLS the S class of SUVs. Well, it's focused really in these lights. Lights are so important at Mercedes-Benz because they give the car the character, regardless of whether there is light to see the car or not. Whatever's coming up behind you, you should know what Mercedes it is by looking at the lights. And the GLS clearly tells you that it is of the S-Class family. And the same is true of this Maybach GLS. Now you will see a heavy focus on making sure that every single area of this car in terms of design has been seen to. And when I say seen to, there's no area where that you will look, even if you get underneath the car, where there isn't attention to detail. For example, we have got the underside of this area all body colored, which you just don't have in any trim in the normal GLS. We've got extensive use 
of high quality chrome, again, emphasizing this idea of Maybach luxury that we saw throughout those awesome concept cars. And that will translate further than inside. But then we've got some super cool details in the rest of the car. We've of course got the Maybach specific wheels here. These are in 23 inches. There are also a 22 inch version. And for the first time, we've got Maybach written here within the center locking nut, which looks very, very cool indeed. Even on the alloys, that same pattern that you saw on the grille translating throughout the multi-spokes. Of course, all of the arches body colored as you would expect from a luxury car. But then have a look at the sides here. This is so much more luxury in its application. We've got body color, but with the chrome trim within it. And you have to really see this chrome trim to appreciate it. It's not quite what you would see on normal cars. And to just call it chrome, I think is a disservice. It looks really, really good. And then you can't talk about this without showing the car's best party trick. Watch this. Now there's no way you thought that existed within here. I didn't. And it's such a clever way of doing the sidestep. But I talked about attention to detail. Let's look at the shape of the rubber used on the sidestep. Not only that, the entire sidestep is also in that pattern. Now, another big clue that this is a Maybach. Uh, if you've seen any S-Class Maybach, you will have seen that the B-pillar always has, again, a chrome metallic finish here, which we've got again in this GLS. And then we've got 130% larger badge for that final pillar on the rear of the car. Again, to emphasize the fact that this is in my back, but you've seen that on every single my back, so it has to be there and it suits the car. But now let's look at the rear of the car, because again, there are differences here as well. You will notice on the rear bumper, again, a chrome trim around where the reflectors are. Again, this is specific to the my back, but more interestingly for me, is again, the use of the typography, which is specific to my back on the car's model name. But the coolest bit of the rear is perhaps the new exhausts. Now, if we have a look at a close up of these, you'll see that there is a slat in between and you've never seen this application of design on exhaust on any Mercedes, AMG or otherwise car. So this is specific to my back and I expect maybe we'll see this application in future cars as well. Now it's hard to ignore the paint on this car. It's of course a two turn arrangement with a very specific pinstripe that goes down the side of the car. Of course, this makes you think of the classic Maybach paint, paint schemes as well. And of course, subconsciously, I think we also think of these two-tone paint schemes as something akin to luxury. So it looks very cool in this obsidian black and ruby red layout. Now guys, let's talk a little bit about tech because as we said, design is one side, technology is the other side of the equation. And it's very important in a Maybach that it focuses on comfort. This car has the 48 volt system like we saw in the 580. So it's immediately got the e-active suspension, which is the best one available for GLS. But this one is tinkered and tailored specifically toward passenger comfort, particularly in the second row that we will explore later. So this is Maybach's own application in this. Indeed, we also then have, because of that 48 volt, we've got some EQ boost under here. I'm talking about the engine. Now you'll know this engine from prior application, for example, in that 580 or in Mercedes AMG cars like the E63. It is indeed the M177, but this one has a unique power output. And as we'll see later, some unique driving modes that are specific to the GLS Maybach. So this car produces 550 brake horsepower and it's got 730 Newton meters of torque. With the EQ Boost, we also get an additional 21 brake horsepower. So that's gonna, again, it's gonna help with driving comfort for that indiscernible switch between EQ Boost and the petrol engine itself. But we can't talk about my back and not talk about experiencing the awesome interiors that they do. That is where 90% of the experience perhaps is. So let's go inside and let's have a look at what this GLS Maybach offers compared to the standard car. Well, this is quite different inside this GLS Maybach. The first impression that you get is that absolutely everything that could be covered with leather is covered with leather. So you look at every single pillar of the car, the headlining, every element that you could conceive is covered in high quality Nappa leather. And then you go into kind of the details and then you see the things that are different. And I want to split this up a little bit. So let's first talk about this front area, which in a Maybach is a bit less important, isn't it? So what is unique to this car? First of all, as a driver, you notice the pedals. 
they're absolutely gorgeous and they really set themselves apart from anything you would have seen in a Mercedes-Benz or an AMG. Then of course you have the normal stuff like the door sills as you enter, the Maybach logo on the front here. A very nice highlight that I like however is where you normally have a leather handrest here. You've got a beautiful wooden one here with the Maybach logo inset inside it which matches the rest of the wood in the car. It looks really premium. The other great thing, for the driver at least, is having a Maybach specific digital screen here, which is finished in blue and rose gold, just like all the concepts that Gordon Wagner has created with Maybach recently with extensive use of rose gold. So it's nice to see that a digital representation of that unique to the Maybach. Now, as far as the interior trims of the Maybach goes, all you can get is specialized wood. There's no room for aluminium or carbon fiber because they are not suitable for Maybach. So in the car I'm sitting at the moment, we've got this brown burgundy-ish wood trim with slight lines going through it, looking quite nice. However, in the other car that we have here, the Hyacinth one, we've got a very deep white interior, almost concept car-like. And you see how the steering wheel, the stitching, and indeed even how the seats are stitched in a completely different way with the highlights coming through the middle of them, really makes these look completely different to the standard GLS. These fins that we've spoken about in the past in the GLE and GLS on the Maybach, they are chrome as you would expect them to be in this car. Fire up the car to stage two and go through the driving options here. Of course, you've got individual sport comfort, but what's unique in this car, we actually have a Maybach option which is completely unique with regard to engine and suspension. Now, what that's gonna do is, it's gonna make things more comfortable for those rear occupants. So it'll get rid of auto start-stop. The way the engine behaves, the way the suspension behaves, will all be geared toward ultimate comfort as a priority. Now, that's interesting, because we've never had that before in a Mercedes-Benz, so the Maybach driving mode is new. What's interesting, we've still got the off-roading one, which is great because it's still a GLS. Why shouldn't it off-road? How's this for ultimate luxury? This does not look like a GLS at all. Closest thing that my mind thinks of immediately is of course, my back Pullman. And that's what they want you to think. So the seats have been shifted somewhat backward. Here we have one of two options. We've got a four seat option with a fixed center console. Again, much like you have in S-Class, or you can have the five-seater option as well. Regardless of what you take, you still get the touchscreen, which helps you command MBUX from sitting in the back of the car. And within this car, you will also see the newest version of the rear entertainment system, this time on an 11-inch screen that can be used as a touchscreen for the first time with MBUX as well. Now, this is my back. I think the most interesting part of the design of this rear is how these rear seats are almost cocoons. I'm gonna show you a shot of this, the way that the light goes around the seats. They almost look like airline seats, don't they? And then you have this feature of the large pane of wood that kind of comes down like a waterfall in the words of the, of the designer. I think it's easier to see on the other spec car where we have the beautiful piano black wood trim with the, the lines in it that's unique to my back. Of course, within this car, we also have the fridge as you would expect. And then you look at the seats themselves, how comfortable they are. Of course, you get an extra pillow because it's a Maybach. You get the softer pillow for the headrest as well. And then you get complete control. Specifically, if you're in that seat, you can push the other passenger seat forward in front of you and get as much leg room as possible. Another interesting fact, because the seats are pushed back, they move the seat controls from where they used to be over here to here to make it easier for the passenger to operate them. Then you also get wonderful options like in the S-Class of the champagne glasses. I was disappointed to find out that, it, that they didn't go ahead with the tea set that they showed us in the ultimate luxury concept, which I thought was quite cool. We also have a wireless charging pad here, slightly odd position. I don't think it's something I would order, but this is an option, so you don't need to get it if you don't like the look of it. The use of ambient lighting is extensive, and I think ambience is really important in a Maybach. So we've got the Burmeister speakers here as standard with the lights around them, and we've got lights right around the panoramic roof. And I think they've done this as a specific thing for GLS when they think about, well, we've got so much roof in this car, how do we use it? 
how do we increase the ambience? Well, this is the way to do it. So you've got the ambient lighting within there as well. You've also got this unique feature where we've got more wood trim here on the rear seats with the Maybach logo in the middle. And again, use of ambient lighting in that area. If I show you the boot, look how lovely the trim is there with the Maybach logo. Of course, you lose space because of the fridge. If you don't get it, you get more space than you would in an S-Class Maybach over 500 litres within this car. This now, to me, feels like the S-Class of SUVs, but of course, beyond S-Class. When I say S-Class, I'm thinking Pullman. It's undoubtedly the most luxurious Mercedes SUV that you will ever sit in, and it really does just simply feel like the Maybach of SUVs. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that first look at the GLS Maybach here in its 600 form. I'm excited to see more of this car and what it looks like on the road with the presence that this vehicle has. But I hope you've enjoyed this first look. If you have, please do like, subscribe and share this video and I'll see you again soon. Maybe I'll have a quick nap this time.